Well, this video is part of a series um, that I'm trying to get this laptop working for some family members, my sister-in-law. Um, which, getting it working in Linux, no problem. Windows has been a little more difficult because of the poor design. Uh, the problem with the computer is that it's physically cracked down here in the corner, and that's causing the touch screen to go haywire, meaning you can't click on anything. You can't even do stuff keyboard-wise, because even if I can open up a program using keyboard shortcuts, I can't work inside those programs because it's constantly clicking down in the bottom corner here. As you can see, it's flipping everything all around. So how can I disable a touch screen in Windows without using the GUI? And really there's no text interface that I know of that I can get to in Windows. Uh, and even, even the few things I've seen online, you have to go into the GUI to enable the text mode. And even then they're not really text modes. So how can we fix this? Well, the answer is I, I've done some Googling and I have found the registry key that enables touchscreen support. So now that I know what key is the proper registry key that I can change the settings of from enabled, which is one, to zero, which is disabled, how can I do that when I can't get into regedit on the Windows machine. Well, the way I look at it, I have two options. I can write myself an executable code that edits the registry and set that to run at start time by going into Linux, copying the executable I made to the computer and adding it to the startup files or adding it to a shortcut key that I can run once Windows is started. Or I can just edit the registry from within Linux. So that's what I'm going to do. Instead of creating an executable that I'm going to copy over in Linux, I'm actually just going to go right in and edit the registry within Linux. So first thing I need to do is boot into Linux. So again, because I can't even get into the interface, I'm going to have to hold down the power button until it shuts down completely. There we go. And then I will take my USB stick with a multi-boot has a few different versions of Linux on there. It doesn't really matter what version. And then I'll go ahead and boot into Linux. So the first few steps here in Linux are what I've done in the previous videos. Control F1, and then I'm going to sudo nano into uh, USR share capital x11 xorg config dot d and 10 dash uh, evdev.config. I'm going to go down to where the touch screen is. And add in our option for ignore. Now that's done. I can go back into my GUI interface and restart. Control backspace and in this particular case or or just kill it from the shell. And here with Linux Mint, it will boot back in or log back in in 10 seconds. Now I'm going to connect to my network because I have to install a couple of tools. So type in my super secret password there, catchphrase, whatever, uh, passphrase, catchphrase. Okay. So now Okay, here I am. I, I've SSH'd into the machine from my desktop machine just so I can screen record this a little bit better. So, now that we've done this, we can now sudo aptitude or apt-get, depending on uh, what distro you're using and what you have installed, but we'll say install. And the program we want to install is called change nt or chntpw. And we'll go ahead and install that. It's a small program that allows you to do two main things. Edit the Windows registry from Linux and also clear out passwords for Windows users, which is also very useful. So now that I've done that, now I need to mount uh, my Windows partition. And I'm probably going to get an error the first time around here. So I'm sudo mount dev sda5 in my case. So it's mounted to mnt. It's going to say that it can only mount as read only because it wasn't shut down properly. I've explained this about the hibernation and fast restart in Windows. We can easily fix that with sudo uh, ntfs fix device sda5. And now I can mount that drive. So now that it's mounted, I got to move to the directory where all the registry files are saved. So I'm going to cd to mnt windows. 
Uh, and then it's system 32 config. So here are all your files that make up your registry. And we want to go into the software ones. So I am now going to use change nt chntpw dash e for edit the registry of the software file. And it is case sensitive here. So if it's all capitals when you list it out, then it's all capitals to get into it. Next, I can list out what keys are available. And we want to go into um, Microsoft. So we will CD Microsoft, again, case sensitive, and CD Wisp, which you can list out again if you need to, but right there is what we want. So we'll CD into Wisp with a capital W in my case, and we'll list out, and then we can go into CD Touch. And we have two things here, and the second one is Touch Gate, it's set to one. So here we can edit it, and we are going to use the command I forget the command, question mark, I think it's, yeah, ed, ed touch gate, oops, we'll hit enter, it tells you the old value, I'm just going to hit zero, hit enter, and I'm going to hit q, it'll ask if I want to write the hive file, which means it, nothing has been changed yet, as soon as you write this, you're making changes, and again, be careful when editing the registry, and now that we've done that, we can reboot our machine. So now we're just waiting for the machine to finish booting. Now you'll notice at this point, if you look down here, you probably can't see in the camera, but it's already the mouse still clicking down there. Do not worry because once the desktop is loaded, it will change those settings and the cursor will be disabled. We just have to now wait for Windows to finish booting, which of course always takes a couple of minutes. I'll pause the video here. We are a couple of minutes into the boot process still here. There we go. So the desktop is done loading. And as you can see, our touch screen no longer works because we disabled it, which is what we were trying to do. But I can now move the cursor with the mouse pad or external mouse. And the system is once again usable. So it took me a little while to figure out how to do this. Unlike Linux, where it's designed to be able to be fixed, <laughs> I guess. Uh, Windows is very limited in its capabilities because it's so poorly designed in that it doesn't even have a text-based interface anymore. It hasn't for about 15 years, uh, probably a little bit more than that. Um, so when you have issues like this, there's no way to fix it. And unlike Linux where I could just boot in and change a simple text file to change settings, everything in Windows is almost all done through the registry, which is a number of databases that are just bloatware and a poor way to store data. But luckily, thanks to CHNTPW, we are able to edit the registry from Windows. That's one way of doing it. I believe I've read that you can also use Wine to go into the RegEdit, but that seems like overkill to me. Uh, again, this is one option. I'm pretty sure I could have written a little C application that executed and changed that value uh, at boot time on the Windows machine. Um, but that would have been a trial and error. Like I would have written, written the code, put, booted into Linux, copied the file over, added it to the startup. If I wrote it right, when I, re when I rebooted, it would have worked. If I had typed something wrong and it didn't work, then it, I would have to go through the whole process again. Where this way, I was able to just go right into the registry uh, as long as I knew what file I had to go into. And it took me a few attempts to, because there's a number of files that make up the registry, um, but I, I looked through three or four of them before I picked the right one. Uh, it was the software one, Microsoft, uh, Wisp, Touch, and then just change the value in there from a one to a zero, and you have disabled the touch interface on your Windows machine. Again, always take care when you're editing registry, either from Windows or Linux, you change the wrong key, you can mess up the system because everything on a Windows system is dependent on that registry. Um, so it's unlike Linux where you can, if you screw up one of the config files, you can usually just delete that config file and it will reload it with the defaults and you don't have to really worry too much about that. On Windows, it's a completely different case because, uh, like again, so much is dependent on that database of the registry and if you screw up the wrong thing, you've screwed up your whole system and there's no just delete it and hope the default you know, comes back in. Um, so. Again, take care, but I just thought I'd share this little uh, adventure with you. Again, I really could care less about getting the Windows machine working. Again, I'm doing it for, for in-laws, um, and obviously they'd be better off going with something other than Windows. Um, and I almost didn't want to put the effort into to fixing the Windows machine because it, I was able to fix it in 30 seconds in Linux, um, but I took it as a challenge. 
And again, it took me a little while. Uh, I tried, you know, different approaches, Googling stuff, and uh, I never actually found an actual way to do what I'm doing directly, but I found enough key little points to, to try different things. And again, the registry key was the way to go for me. If you have another way that you can think of doing something like this, let me know. Remember that the Windows interface was completely unusable. So let me know what you think in the comments. Do you know of another way to get into a text mode on Windows without going into the GUI first that the touchscreen wouldn't inter interface, uh, the touchscreen wouldn't mess up your interface, that you actually type commands and make modifications? Do you know of another way to disable the touchscreen? I read online a, a few different uh, commands you could run, uh, and I tried those. Um, in a roundabout way and they didn't seem to work for me, but the registry uh, did seem to work and I figured there was a setting in registry because again, everything is dependent on that registry in a Windows system. So anyway, I think I've talked enough. Uh, comment below, let me know what you think. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Uh, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. And again, uh, hopefully you've already watched the previous videos on this project because I kind of skimmed over some stuff in this video that we went over in detail in the previous videos. But I thank you for watching. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.